Exodus chapter 20. And I'm going to preach a, a, I'm going to preach a tough one this morning. And I want us to be, I want us to be still. I want us to be quiet. Oh, before I forget, Tony Dominguez sent us a whole case of communion wafers. I thought that was real nice. Oh, those are Necco wafers. Those are, no, they're not for you. They're for me. Communion wafers. Well, they're unleavened. They're unleavened. Thank you, Tony. He says he's been following long time from California. Amen. All right, you have Exodus 20. All right, now we're going to get some we're going to get serious. Okay? We're going to start at verse 1 and we're going to read down to verse 14. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy, thy God. In it thou shalt do no, do any work. Thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. And then... The seventh commandment, verse 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. The parallel to that is in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 18, neither shalt thou commit adultery. I like, I like how you can see a, a slight difference between Exodus 20, 14 and, Ex and Deuteronomy 5, 18. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Deuteronomy 5, it looks like it says the same thing. Neither shalt thou commit adultery. But it's not actually saying 100% the same thing. It's saying uh, in the law before it, neither shalt thou kill, neither shalt thou commit adultery. That means one is as bad as the other. For God to say, neither do this, Neither shalt thou do this, and neither shalt thou do that, and neither shalt thou do this. It gives us the idea that God is saying, well, don't, don't pick one of them out and think that one of them's okay or less sinful than the other. They're all, neither shalt thou do this, and neither shalt thou do that. They're all just as wrong as the other ones are. Somebody say amen. Now, if you, if, you, um, if you have a computer and you get on 
the Pure Bible Search software, it has a Webster's 1828 dictionary built into it. And I typed in the word adultery. And it means to adulterate. I thought that it had to do with, you know, what adults do. That's not what it means. The Latin is from adulteral, from uh, add and alter, which means to corrupt, debase, or make impure by admixture of baser materials as to adulterate liquors. Those of you who used to go to bars, you knew what bars added water to the liquor. So you didn't go there. They're watering the, they're watering the drinks. I ain't going there no more. Or the coin of a country, meaning that they're adding tin to the gold. They're mixing it in there so that you think it's pure gold. It's not. They've got tin or they've got brass in there or copper. And they've adulterated the gold, which means they have corrupted the gold. So I want you to think of it like this. I want you to think of marriage as gold. Pure gold. Beautiful gold. And to adulterate or commit adultery corrupts, debases, rots gold. It ruins it. That's what it means to make to commit adultery, tainted with adultery, debased by foreign mixture. You can think of that and say there's somebody involved in my life that should not be involved in my life. You can look at it that way. And what that means is, I'm married to Lisa, and old Jezebel, here she comes moving in. She starts trying to chum up to me, get to be friendly with me. She is trying to adulterate my marriage. She is trying to taint my relationship with my wife she's trying to debase what it is that we have together in order to destroy it that's what it means to commit adultery now I'm one of these I don't some people say, well, you know, there's a difference between fornication and adultery. And ad adultery is simply what married people do and fornication is what unmarried people do. I don't care who you are. If you commit fornication, you've adulterated your marriage. In fact, if I were to just, man, I don't like to do this, but just go down a list of things that are part of the adultery process. Uh, just chatting with women online that are not your wife. You can call it innocent if you want. Unless it's your mom or your sister or something like that. Definitely, definitely, pornography is adultery. It is fornication. In fact, the Greek word for fornication is 
porne, P-O-R-N. Same, it's, that's where pornography comes from. It is the adulteration of the marital act in graphic form. That's what it is. And, I, and, and again, you can... I, let me give it an example. I had a, had a guy in my office. He had heard me on the radio from the Prophecy Club days. Was on, he was moving up. He lived down in Texas, was moving up north somewhere, stopped at our church, wanted me to counsel with him for a while. And I did. He was um, Nazarene church. Nazarene believes that as soon as you get saved, all, you're, you cannot sin after that. In fact, you never sin after that. You don't sin after you get saved. Nazarene people cannot sin. Did you know that? According to their doctrine, it's not possible for them to sin. He came to talk to me because the, the elder pastor, he was an older man, he was on his way to retirement. He was setting his son up to take his place when he retired, heir of the kingdom, and yet his son was going over to see his wife, this man's wife, who, who was like a deacon in the church, an elder. While he was at work, the pastor's son was going to see this man's wife at his house. Now I'm not going to get any farther than that, but they swore they never actually committed the act. But they did everything but. That's adultery. And you know, they held, a, they held a trial in that church to see if that assistant pastor had actually committed a sin with this man's wife and the church voted, nope, he's clean. The man's in my office bawling his eyes out because he knew what had happened. God had strict penalties for those who committed the corruption of the marital act. Leviticus 20 verse 10, and the man, we didn't pray. Let's pray. Father, I ask for your help to preach this message. God, I don't, I don't mean to be condemnatory I don't mean to act like I'm perfect and nobody else is. Father, this, this commandment probably affects more people than we want to know. If the truth were to be known, this commandment has at least one time affected every adult person in this church and maybe some teenagers. And Father, now we live in a world, God help us, that it's now affecting our children. God help us. Father help us, dear God, as parents to constantly be on guard. Constantly to be on guard. And in, in, in a way to where we just almost don't trust anybody. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would forgive, you would love, Father, but you would chasten anyone guilty of even the thought of this. Because that's what Jesus told us. Just the thought of it. It's the same thing. So, Father, bless your word today. Help me to preach in love, but, Father, in strictness. 
Bless your word. I love you and I love this church. Thank you, dear God, for loving all of us. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. Strict penalties, Leviticus 20.10, and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Boom. Death penalty for adultery in the wilderness law, this law was to be carried over into, when they got into the land of, of Israel, this, uh, this uh, law was to be carried over. David, you remember, committed adultery, should have been killed. According to the law, he should have been held accountable for his sins and should have been killed for what he had done. That's just my opinion. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something out of the Bible, but I, I think I know the story well enough to know that David committed adultery. God did not change the law. Had David, having the proof thereof that he committed adultery, he was confronted by Nathan the prophet. David, of course, did repent of his sins. And the prophet told him, Nathan said, thou shalt not die or thou shalt live. So maybe that was the out that God gave him that was that he confessed his sin and God spared his life from being taken as a result of his adultery. But it's clearly in the law that if a man and a woman had committed adultery, they both were to be killed. You remember the story where they brought the woman to Jesus saying we caught, we caught this woman in the act of adultery in the very act. Well, who was, it, who was she in the very act with? How come we only got one person here to kill? Why don't we have two of them to kill? There's all kinds of questions about that story that have never been answered, amen? Job 24, verse 14. The murderer rising with the light killeth the poor and needy, and the night is as a thief. The eye also of the adulterer waiteth for the twilight, saying, No eye shall see me, and disguiseth his face. I want to tell you something. People who say they don't believe in God, people who say they don't believe in sin, people who say that they believe that whatever they do is all right, what, however they do it, how, whatever I want to do was fine with me, then if that's the case, why is it that they always hide their adultery, always hide their porn, always hide their text messages to their girlfriend, always hiding it? It's because they know it's wrong. Psalm 50, verse 16, But unto the wicked God saith, What is thou to declare to my servants, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in my mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee? When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. There is, man... There is a church in this, in this area, a youth, youth pastor and his wife, and I, you can't tell me the pastor didn't know no, nothing about it. This man's wife, this youth pastor's wife in this church was having it with most of the men of that church. And she finally found her a guy, she hated her husband, she finally found her a guy that she could talk into shooting him while he was out deer hunting. And, it, and she sh had him shot. Shot and killed. It actually showed up on one of these Discovery Channel mystery TV shows. And I guarantee you there's a lot of nervous men in that church and one of them might have been the pastor. We have the story of Joyce Myers, chief of security, who was having an affair with a woman down in Florida, decided, and because, because Joyce said, if you get a divorce, you can't work in my ministry anymore. He decided not to divorce his wife. He decided to kill his wife and kids. 
to cover the divorce. And churches act like it's nothing. The Free Will Baptist Church in Oklahoma, where the pastor and his wife were sharing themselves with another man. And that other man was given a gun by the wife saying, my husband, when he gets back from a mission trip in Mexico, uh, the night that he's asleep, I want you to blow his brains out and we'll pretend like somebody broke into the house. It is wickedness. It leads to, listen, this stuff is everywhere including churches. God has strict penalties. Uh, th this is one of them. I don't have it in my notes, but this is one of them. Be sure your sin will find you out. Is that one of them? So, how would you like to have a church meeting where we had to bring you before the church and declare unto the church the sins of adultery that you got involved in? How would you like, how would you like that to happen? There's a way out of that. Follow the scriptures. Jeremiah 3.8 And I saw and went for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I put her away and gave her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. God divorced Israel for adultery. Those of you who want to say, God hates divorce. God is against divorce. God, God doesn't allow divorce. God divorced Israel for it. Jeremiah 3, 9, And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and stocks. You know what that means? She was, not, she was committing spiritual adultery with idols. And by the way, a lot of the religious practices of those pagan religions that the Jews learned about involved temple adultery. Temple adultery. So in Jeremiah 5, 7, God said, How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods, when I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. I fed them to the full and took good care of them. They went out and committed adultery and that wasn't enough for them. They went out and piled up in harlots' houses. In the Vatican. Vatican scandal, a couple years ago, the number of cardinals, Vatican officials, Vatican bishops that were caught up in a sodomite brothel, the number of them was disgustingly high. Swept under the rug. Jeremiah 7, 9. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom you know not? See, they go together. They go together. You see, when you decide that the adultery that you're committing is okay, then it will cause you to carve out a different God than the one that you used to believe in before you were committing adultery. 
a God that will allow your adultery, not condemn it, allow it. I've been, I've been talked to by people. Oh, but she's my soulmate. This, I, I really got the right one, Brother, Brother Mike, this time. I really got the right one. She really is. I, I think my first marriage was a big mistake. I, I, I don't think we were sp ever supposed to be together. Then why'd you get married and have four kids? And then now why are you considering leaving this marriage and those four children to go sleep with the woman that you, to go marry the woman that you're already sleeping with. There was a picture that made some, some of the European magazines, made some of the American magazines and news, and news sites of Benny Hinn walking into a, um, uh, a Rome hotel holding hands with one of these other name it, claim it preachers named Paula White. The reason why they were both in Rome at the same time, walking into the same hotel, holding hands was twofold. Number one, they were there to sleep with one another. Number two, they were having a meeting with the Pope, which is the greater whoredom, which is the bigger adultery. Sleeping with Rome is sleeping with Rome. Jeremiah 29, 23, because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives and have spoken lying words in my name, which I, see, when you, when you sleep with your neighbor's wives, you're gonna lie. What was that guy's name? Chris, something, another, Chris, um, Killed his wife and his three daughters. Chris Watts. Had him a real, I mean, must have been a high-paying job with an oil company out there in Colorado because, I mean, he had a nice two-story house, nice brand-new truck, probably a company truck all paid for because he wanted to be with the woman that he saw at the office. And I don't know what his deal was. He didn't go to church anywhere. So he just went home one night, killed his wife, shoved a pillow over his girl's face, and killed them. Stuffed them in the back of a pickup truck, took them out to an oil field that he knew of, had a big oil tank out there, with an opening this big and shoved the bodies of his little girls down that hole, sealed them up, and then took his wife over about 30 yards and buried her in a shallow grave. How can you do that? That is sick. You see, a man that can commit adultery like that, what else is he capable of? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives and have spoken lying words in my name which I have not commanded them. Even I know and I am a witness, saith the Lord. Ezekiel twenty three thirty seven, that they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands and with their idols they have committed adultery and have also, see, that's what the Bible's telling you. Whatever sin you decide to keep, that will change your doctrine, won't it? So when you don't like going 
to a church that's going to preach against taking the Lord's name in vain, committing adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. When, when you don't like going to a church like that, you're going to go to a church that ain't like that. That will allow everything to go on. where they have the sodomite lesbian women working with the girls' class on Sunday morning. Do you trust that? I wouldn't trust that. See... In Ezekiel 23, 37, they've committed adultery and the blood is in their hands and with their idols have they committed adultery and have also caused their sons and whom they bear unto me to pass them through the fire to devour them. You know what adultery will, will do to you? It will cause you to care so little about your children that you would kill them even before they were born. Or kill them after they're born. Or turn them loose to the wolves. Hosea 4.14, 4, I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore the people that, have, that doth not understand shall fall. Then Matthew, now we're in the New Testament. People say, well, it's Old Testament, that doesn't matter. We're in the New Testament now, so let's, all right, here we go. Matthew 15, 17. Do you not yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draft? See, I'm still being told that if I eat the wrong thing that I'm defiling my temple and I'm going to go to hell for it. I'm being told that if I, and I'm sorry, you're just going to have to forgive me. I've been told that if I take a vaccine that I'm defiling my body and I'm, God, God's mad at me for it. Let me remind you of what our God told us, our Savior. Remember him, Jesus? You are not defiled by what goes into your body, but what comes out of your body. Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. That's how you defile your body. That's what you're going to be held accountable for. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. No, no, look at this. Look at the order. Idolaters, adulterers, effeminate. Who did he put before the gay guys? The adulterers. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Let me, let's turn there because I, I got to... I can't leave that opened up like that because I, I want you to know that God can forgive it all. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I can't leave you hanging there. You know, this kind of different way we're doing our services, that's working out pretty good. I'm almost done, and it's just a little bit after 12. Which means I can drag this to 1230 and still be. Nah, I'm not going to do that. First Corinthians 6. 
9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. As your sodomites. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But, are, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. Let me ask you a question. Can God forgive adulterers? Can God forgive effeminate men that wear dress, women's clothes? Can God forgive those who have been with same sex? I know for a fact. I'm going to see him in heaven. I want to introduce you to him. Soon as we all get to heaven, I'm going to say, this is the guy right here. Um, there is forgiveness. Trust me. There's forgiveness. Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Now, I thought I had more notes in here, but I don't. So I'm going to say, let me say this. God, in that list of commandments that he gave us, swore that every one of them could be nailed to the cross and were. And any body who had committed such things can be forgiven if you want to be forgiven. Now, let me, let, me, let me say this. Turn to 1 John. This may not be the best verse in the world for this, but I'm going to give you something. I'm not... I'm not um, I'm not so dumb as to think that nobody in our church could ever do anything like that. I'm not that dumb. I'm not so out of it that I couldn't possibly imagine anybody in our church having a problem looking at pictures and videos on the internet I, it's possible that maybe some of you here maybe have been unfaithful to your wife or to your husband. It may be known and forgiven in the marriage. It may not be known. I don't believe that there is anything in scriptures that I may be wrong, but I do not believe that there is anything in scriptures that demands a husband telling his wife that he's been unfaithful, nor a wife telling her husband that she's been unfaithful. And I will say this, there is absolutely nothing in Scripture that says if your husband has been unfaithful, you must divorce him. That's not there. It is within the ability and the rights of a person if the spouse has been unfaithful in the marriage 
It is the right of the other person in the marriage that they have a right to divorce. But there's no requirement. Hosea was married to a whore. And she was whoring on him. And yet, he forgave her again. Took her back. Made her a brand new woman. I, just want, I love that story. God can take the worst adulterer, the worst fornicator. God can save those afflicted with the bondage of pornography. God can save those afflicted with, with adulterous natures, even to where it's getting into the realm of sodomy. God can even save pedophiles. God can save anybody. Amen. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to have a, a pew altar call. Now, if you want to come down to one of these altars, you're more than welcome to. I just don't want to single anybody out, embarrass anybody over this. Somebody say, oh, look what Michael's preaching, Brother Mike's preaching on, and look, here they come down. You know, I suspected them all along. You can stay where you are, you can come down here. Maybe you know somebody that is bound up so bad. I know somebody. I know somebody who is bound up so bad in using a phone app to find same-sex mates. And I pray for them. Because if, if I was bound up in that, I would want somebody praying for me. So if you feel led to come down here, won't you come down and let's pray for these people. Pray for yourself. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray that God will protect your children. Pray that God will watch over them. 